before we begin, I'd just like to say that there is absolutely no scientific evidence to support clairvoyance of any kind. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times you missed foreshadowing details on TV shows. It's funny how sometimes you just find things. We could be quite a team. If you came around to my way of thinking, would that mean we have to snuggle? Here's some money, go see a Star War. For this list, we'll be looking at the ways television shows subtly dropped hints foretelling future events. Did we miss any from your favorite show? We foreshadow that you'll share them with us in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. A Psychic Predicts Sheldon and Amy's Nobel Win – The Big Bang Theory In the emotional final scene, the gang watches Sheldon and Amy achieve their lifelong dream of winning a Nobel Prize. And in the field of physics, Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler and Dr. Sheldon Cooper for their discovery of super asymmetry. However, it seems that this ending may have been teased back in Season 7. When Penny and Sheldon hit a crossroads in life, they end up visiting a psychic. She tells Sheldon that once he fully commits to his relationship, everything else will fall into place. Sheldon, do you hear that? I mean, Amy is the key to your happiness. Exactly. Personally and professionally, everything will fall into place once you commit to her. And remind us, where do Shamie come up with their super asymmetry discovery? Talk about right on the nose. Oh, science is shocking! <laughs> you don't understand, this could be really big. No, Penny's right. We have our whole lives to do science together. We guess that this whole clairvoyance thing might not be utter malarkey after all, eh, Sheldon? Number 9. Littlefinger foresaw a grim future. Game of Thrones. In season 4, we see Peter Baelish give his stepson, Robin Aaron, a rather bleak pep talk. While urging him to take control of his own life, he reminds him that death is always looming and even provides some rather ominous examples. People die at their dinner tables, they die in their beds, they die squatting over their chamber pots. Everybody dies sooner or later. In hindsight, some avid Game of Thrones fans may have noticed that he accurately predicted the circumstances that lead to the demise of several characters later on. His speech already seems to reference King Joffrey's prior death at the Purple Wedding, but could also foreshadow Walder Frey's dinner table downfall. My name is Arya Stark. I want you to know that. The last thing you're ever going to see is a Stark smiling down at you as you die. It also alludes to how Tyrion strangles Shay in bed and later kills his father while on the toilet. It's a shame he couldn't predict what awaited him in season 7, though. Thank you for all your many lessons, Lord Baelish. I will never forget them. Number 8. A humorous foreshadowing – Arrested Development This sitcom was as sly as it was funny when it came to foreshadowing motifs. In Season 2, several clues pointed towards Buster's life-changing accident, where a seal – yes, you heard us correctly – bites off his hand. I'm a monster! Some notable examples include his joy at being reunited with his hand-shaped chair and the bench he sits on, where only arm and off are visible from the words army officers. And Buster is on his way when he decides to pursue a long-delayed rite of passage. Another genius bit of foreshadowing led to the uncovering of the company's mole in Season 3. The writing was literally on the banana stand and Hello Anyang Bluth's t-shirt all along. What the hell did you do this for? Because my grandfather vowed one day he would get even for banana sand you stole from him. Number 7. The Foretelling of Finn's Arm – Adventure Time Adventure Time follows Finn the human and his magical bestie Jake the dog as they explore the land of Ooh. During their adventures, they'd cross paths with alternate versions of themselves. I want them to see me. I'm gonna go up there and show them my face! But strangely, other Finns were usually shown to be missing an arm, while our Finn undoubtedly had both. 
The writers kept this mystery up for six seasons. Then, in Escape from the Citadel, it finally happens and Finn loses his arm to the Grass Sword. It might not have been the most subtle use of foreshadowing, but it certainly kept audiences captivated as they continued to search for answers. Yes, yes, I, I, I've searched for decades. How did you know? Number 6. What did Sam and Dean's mom do? Supernatural. Sam Winchester didn't get a chance to know his mother since she was killed six months after he was born. But when he encounters her in ghost form back in season one, she apologizes to him for some unknown reason. I'm sorry. For what? It all becomes clear in season four when we learn about her deal with the demon Azazel. To resurrect her new fiance John and live a normal life, Mary grants Azazel entry to her home in ten years. For what? Relax. As long as I'm not interrupted, nobody gets hurt. I promise. Due to her grief, she doesn't question the full terms and conditions of the agreement. This essentially uncovered the catalyst for the entire series. Destiny can't be changed, Dean. All roads lead to the same destination. Then why'd you send me back? For the truth. Number 5. Willow's first coming out story, Buffy the Vampire Slayer When Willow came out in season 4, some fans felt that it felt forced, but it went on to give us one of the series' greatest power couples. Mm, I forgot how good this could feel. Us together. Without the magic. There was plenty of magic. <laughs> And it was actually foreshadowed earlier on. In the season 3 episode Doppelgang Land, a spell gone wrong creates a vampire version of the redhead. When Willow first sees her blood-sucking doppelganger, she makes some interesting remarks. That's me as a vampire? I'm so evil and skanky. And I think I'm kind of gay. Angel then tries to confirm that Vampire Willow might share more than just appearances with the OG. Could this have been Willow's first attempt at coming out and we just missed the signs? You don't have to be afraid. Just to please me. Number 4. Nibbler's Shadow – Futurama Futurama creator Matt Groening is known for his complex and intricate storylines, but this one is a true testament to his genius. Our sages foresee that in a thousand years, for one moment, the fate of the universe will depend on you. In the pilot episode, Fry awakens in the 31st century after accidentally falling into a cryogenic tube. Or at least that's what we thought. But if you return to that life-changing moment from the first episode, you'll notice a mysterious shadow cast on the wall. It's not until season four that the shadow's owner is finally revealed, and it's a huge plot-altering moment. You must choose the present or the future. To save yourself or save Leela. According to Graining, the pilot is filled with plenty of seeds, planted for a greater payoff later. Just remember that Scooty Puff Jr. sucks! In a thousand years, I'll get right on it. Number 3. The Mom's Fate – How I Met Your Mother We waited nine seasons for Ted to meet the titular mother, only for her to pass away in one of the most divisive series finales of all time. That's it. That's it. No, I don't buy it. However, it might have come as less of a shock had we spotted the clues along the way, and they were plentiful. From Ted's gut-wrenching monologue at the end of Time Travelers, or Tracy's offhand comment in Vesuvius. There's not really such a surprise. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, of course she showed up. What mother is going to miss her daughter's wedding? Some were more subtle, though, such as song choices, a neighboring headstone in Season 6's tailgate, or even Ted's favorite book. Perhaps we chose to miss the signs, because we simply didn't want it to be true. Number 2. The Significance of Light and Dark Lost 
Some fans think that the writers of Lost made it all up as they went, but they actually had a lot of significant plot points mapped out. What is it like, checkers? Not really, it's a better game than checkers. And by providing small inklings along the way, they kept fans hooked. In season one, while playing backgammon with Walt Lloyd, John Locke has a rather unique way of explaining the rules of the game. Two players, two sides. One is light, one is dark. But it turns out that he wasn't just talking about backgammon, as he pretty much encapsulates the central themes of the entire series. It also foreshadowed the rivalry between Jacob and the Man in Black seasons later. According to executive producer and co-creator Damon Lindelof, this was no coincidence. There are very smart men among us, men who are curious about how things work. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Pre-Telling of the Plane Crash – Breaking Bad Throughout Season 2, audiences were left to decipher the meaning behind the black-and-white teaser intros that appeared in several episodes. However, in the season finale, it all became tragically clear. Say it. <laughs> I woke up, I found her, that's all I know. I woke up, I found her, that's all I know. Again? I woke up, I found her, that's all I know. Again? Jane's father, who's an air controller, accidentally causes a plane crash due to his grief over his deceased daughter. The show managed to simultaneously keep us in the dark while also spelling out this impending disaster through those cold opens. If you put the episode titles together, the devastating incident is revealed. The emblematic pink teddy bear is also found among the ruins, which becomes a symbol for the consequences of Walt's actions. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.